Tyler Lockett is a versatile NFL talent. An instinctive and creative playmaker has both a receiver and Pro Bowl returner. This Lockett shows his heart, not only making plays in the field, but using play on words as a hope-filled spoken word poet. So how can you see what it's like to be me if you ain't never been in my position? When it's easy to put myself in a box and try to live and to go out here in this world and try to be free. What it is that you want to say to be able to get them to see your side of the perspective, to be able to impact everybody at the place that they're at, kids, adults, anybody. Like his oratory art, Tyler's impact with the football provides him room to create. What's the mindset, what's the view you have when you get the ball on a return? All I see is open space. Um, obviously, we have a game plan. We have holes that's supposed to be open. You got to be able to learn how to set it up and learn how to be able to trust everybody around you. It's all about being able to set up the blocks. And so you just got to learn how to be creative in a way that you do it, but also to be able to put yourself in a position to help the team be successful. So Tyler, how does a skill from both of your positions as a returner and as a receiver, what does it provide you with? Uh, well, first, I think it helps you with value because in the NFL, it's all about the more that you can do to be able to be a receiver and do both returns. It kind of gives you a position to be able to be on that depth chart. Whenever you look at the return game, it helps you with being able to transition. When you had a ball in your hands, it's, it's on you. You make everything happen. Whether you catch it, whether it's a reverse, it turns into a punt return. It does seem like there's a lot of creativity, and that hits your sweet spot, right? Are there the similarities between you as a poet and you as a football player? So you got to be able to be creative, but I think you got to be able to make people believe what you're doing. And I think that's the biggest thing, because the way you run routes, if you try to give them like a little nod, they got to believe it. So in my poetry, if I don't believe it, if I don't think it sounds good enough, then I know that they're not going to think it sounds good enough, or they're not going to believe it. What is the pondering and the expression of spoken word for you? In my spoken word, instead of me pointing at other people, I put it all in my shoes because it's easier for somebody to relate. It takes away any type of feelings that people had towards not wanting to accept it because now it's not anything going after them. It's they can grasp what you're saying. And so I try to put it to where everybody can relate and understand. What would be the best thing to happen where and how do you want it to impact? I don't always put the hope in the message, but there's other times that I do. You know, I had a friend who had talked about committing suicide, and I had put that in a poem. In order to be able to get him out the dark, you gotta turn on the light so you, he can have, be able to see what it is about his life that people appreciate and how his life is important and impactful to everybody else around him. And so it's like little analogies so people can be able to get and understand. And now I'm at the place where I wanna be. And I know exactly who I'm going to be and who I'm going to reach and who I'm going to teach. Now y'all looking at me like, boy, you better preach. But if I preach it, then I got to live it. Wow. Well said. You wordsmith, you. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> How do you live what you preach? Being able to keep yourself accountable. I mean, if you don't have that accountability, if you don't have somebody there to push you or help you, you got to learn how to be able to push and help yourself because at some point in time, you're going to be isolated. The closer you get to God, the easier it is for you to change because it just happens. It's not like you got to force yourself to do it. That's all it's about is being you and being able to get closer to God. And you understand the price that was made for you, how Jesus died on the cross and your sins was paid for you. In spoken word. Scripture is referred to as the word. Yeah. Does scripture look or sound differently to you? You see? what scripture says to that situation to where now you could try to add certain things into your poems to where people are like, oh, wow, you know, okay. I think when you read the word, I think you start seeing the little things and how it kind of does affect your life. Because a lot of people gonna pay attention, but if I live it right, then they'll realize that Jesus Christ is the one they missing. And if he the missing piece, then they can finish that puzzle. And dudes ain't gotta go in them streets and struggle. How has your companionship with him, your savior, how has that shaped you? To me, honestly, he's everything. You're gonna get to the point where it's like, it has to be more. What is it that's gonna keep me going? What is it that gives me a purpose not to be depressed or not to have anxiety or not to be fearful of death? The one thing that keeps you going is to have faith in God and to believe that Jesus came and died for everything. He's given you the things that you need to live a fulfilled, thankful life.